I just had the pleasure. Oh, I just realized there's trash in the background now. We'll just swivel this way. Oh, hi. <laughs> I just had the pleasure of talking with one of my favorite artists. Ah, Donna Mibus. I talked to her for an hour and it is my pleasure to bring you this interview. She was the basis of the inspiration for a recent week-long party I had to celebrate the opening of my FunFab Drawing Club over at Awesome Art School. We had uh, 2,000 people all drawing together and so much of the inspiration came directly from Donna's work. So it was my pleasure to interview her today. I got all my questions answered. I got questions from my students for her answered and um, please, please go check out her work, DonnaMidas.com. Um, she's an amazing artist and an amazing person. Donna, thank you so much for talking with me. Everyone else, enjoy the interview. Bye, okay, so just hit click got it. Exactly. Okay. That's as crazy as we're going to get. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not into technology. I know, I know. Well, it was funny because um, my students are not either. And they and I was showing them your prints this morning. Um, I have them right here. And thank you so much. I am, I'm going to make a whole Donna gallery wall in my well, living room. And I'm so excited. So thank you so much. Well, I love my books. Oh, good. Yeah, the, the extra one you sent me find your style. Mm -hmm. Oh, it'll take you 10 years to write that. <laughs> it's no. like so much. It's there. so wonderful. Good, good. I hope it becomes a real, real long lasting resource for you for sure. That's great. Um, first of all, it's so nice to meet you. I'm like your biggest fan. So I'm so okay. excited that I get to talk to you in person. I have no idea. Um, yeah, I, can I just launch in with some questions? I'm so excited. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, um, yeah, I, I love I love your work so much. Um, it has inspired me for a long time. And I was just shocked that when I found out that you didn't start painting until the age of 50. I know. So, of course, everyone wants to know, well, what were you doing before you were 50? And what, you know, what, how did you get, how did you yeah, get started? 50. I used to joke about that mid-century, you know, out of <laughs> oh, the irony. Yes. <laughs> well, I was raising kids and um, then, so my kids grew up, my daughter had a, had a baby and, but she didn't get married. So then they moved in. So then I was helping to raise grandkids oh, and, wow. you know, just, just too busy. Yeah. I, I kind of played around with art, you know, doing things with the kids. And I taught my when my daughter was in school, she went to a Christian day school. So it was little, you know, mm -hmm. like 70 kids, grades, kindergarten through eight. Mm -hmm. And so I would teach the younger kids up to grade four art because mm -hmm. I figured you don't have to be a chef to teach people how to cook. Absolutely. Yes. You don't have to be an artist to sure. teach kids. Yeah. And I was so shocked, Karen, because so many of those kids had never used a ruler, never used scissors, never done they just oh didn't do things, you know, Yeah. and uh, I loved it. So I've kind of just, I've been artistic, meaning creating things and having fun, but yeah. never thought to, never thought to do it seriously. Right. You know? right. Um, and then in fact, I was teaching my grandkids. Sorry, we just got back from Walmart and my hair just blew away, but um, I was teaching my granddaughters. Well, it started with making church banners, actually, the artist part. Mm -hmm. And I was wasting a lot of paper trying to design them. So I used a computer program, just the free paint, you know, on your computer. Yeah. yeah. And then I would create these room scenes <laughs> using it. Yes. And then I was teaching my two granddaughters art. And if you look at my Etsy, there's an about, I don't know if they still call it the about section. Right. And uh, I show my two granddaughters. And so I bought a bunch of paint and then I decided to try to paint them. Well, I loved it. I just loved painting and uh, creating, you know. Yes. But then they started piling up these paintings because, you know, when you, my husband hobby is listening to music, so he doesn't produce anything. <laughs> right. And, uh, but I had these paintings and then my husband said, why don't you sell them? Which I thought, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> and uh, my daughter told me about Etsy. She helped me set up my shop. And that was two, 2012, so 10 years ago. It's 10 years. Oh, my gosh. I feel old. And uh, anyway, so I, I put one on there, put them on there, and then pricing, you know, it's like, what are you pricing? Right. So right. I put 40 for this 11 by 14. And my daughter's like, you put 40? I think you should put 25. I don't know. 
I don't know why your kids are so insulting, but um, <laughs> anyway, like so that. <laughs> so two funny. weeks later, I started selling. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And um, anyway, so that's, that's kind of how it started. Oh, that's just, so just like playing around with right, it. Right, right. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's yeah. awesome. And I think, um, I, I think, and again, I'm, re I'm reaching out to you again, really on behalf of my students, because so many of them and us are in the same boat where like, I still have three kids at home with me and I can see, you know, and I can see when they leave, like, oh my gosh, I'll have even that much more time. <laughs> like, what do you do with all that time that you never had that all of a sudden your whole day opens up and then you fall in love with something and you're like, oh my gosh, I get to do this like on a Tuesday and I don't have to leave and pick anybody up. And that's like, I know, you know, so freeing. So I think that's well, so see, I, um, fantastic. I homeschooled my grandson from first for seven years. I homeschooled oh him and uh, that takes up a lot of time. So it went, my art went on the back burner yeah. at that point. Yeah. And, and quite frankly, it was forever before I really considered myself an artist. I would tell the, um, we would meet with the accountant just to do the income part of it and all that stuff. And he would say, oh, it's a business. And I would say, oh, it's a hobby. Right, right. It's totally, totally. totally. And um, all that. So it was really a while before I ever started thinking of myself as a professional artist. Right, uh, same. You know, but yeah, so they, they actually moved out, my grandson and daughter, just in 2020. So for the first time, I turned 60 this year, so I was 58. For the first time, I was an empty nester at 58. Oh, my gosh. I know. I was really depressed for a while there because- <laughs> Oh, yeah. Your whole life. life. Yeah. And art was my side thing. Gig. Right. But then, you know, and I don't mean to sound like I don't, I'm happy they're gone, but- no. <laughs> Please, <laughs> yeah, it's I, okay. I'm counting the days to my toll. This one goes to college, yeah. so Well, no that's the thing. I can spend hours and not feel guilty like I'm yes. neglecting somebody. Right. And so I have to say, I'm now really enjoying it. And so my grandson's room is the print room. I have the printer set up in the cutting station and the packing station. And, um, and then my daughter's room is now my studio. So yes. mm, that you know, worked out perfectly. Oh, instead, of, instead of crying over empty rooms, right. I, just, I decided I needed to change them. So I don't go in there and go, oh, this used to be my grandson's room, you know. Right. And uh, so I'm, I'm loving it now. Uh, I bet you are. Good for you. And you deserve all of that. You know, I mean, you worked so hard and you dedicated your whole life for others. So, yeah. you know, I think it's high time that you can just enjoy yourself and not feel selfish about it. Right. Cause you truly right. did your duty and you served and now it's your time. Gosh, darn it. And I think that's Gosh, fantastic. I love it <laughs> so, so much. And I think that so many people can, can relate to that. And not only that though, it's also, I know that's also really scary for people to like start something for the first time when they're 60 years old. They think like, who am I to do? Like, this is so weird. Like I'm not painting during my day. Like I'm supposed to be doing laundry or like cleaning something or helping someone. And so I know it can feel really selfish to like take a whole day and do something that you love. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like it's okay. And it's fantastic to start something brand new that you enjoy at any age, whether that's 16 or 66, I think it's fantastic. I love it's it. Funny. I've had so many women write to me and say, they find out I didn't start till I was 50, right? Yeah. And they're like, you inspired me because I just felt like I was too old and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, too old, too old. <gasps> You're like, wait. Um, <laughs> you know, so I just recently, in fact, I, I've done acrylics all along mm -hmm. and I like to do these art challenges where I sell my work with other artists. And so we try different things and we're in it together and we support each other. And I was seeing these watercolor paintings. Now watercolor, I think when I think of watercolor, I think of kids and you get out the little watercolors the little pan, and you got the yes. paper and you know, ugh. and but then I was seeing what you could, what these professional oh. artists could do with oh, it. Yeah. And so I tried my hand for the first time at watercolor. And I need to tell you, it is different and it is oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yes. And so, you know, here I am trying, I'm continuing to try new things. You just Good. can't be afraid because, and especially if you're an empty nester, who's mm -hmm. looking over your shoulder? Who's yeah. making fun of you? You know, nobody, nobody. nobody. Exactly. And, uh, but it surprises me. It makes me feel kind of sad that these women, you know, were afraid 
I, and, I completely like, I can't, I can't more strongly agree with everything that you're saying is so it's like, you have nothing to lose. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it, like no one was hurt in the making of this ugly painting. Like nobody cares, you know, it, it impacts nothing, which to me is so freeing. Like, oh good. Then let's make some mistakes. Like, cause it doesn't matter. Let's try something. Does, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, doesn't like, matter. I, I can't think of actually anything else in life where it really doesn't matter in that, in as much as that doesn't matter. Do you know what I'm saying? Like everything else is very heavy and responsibility and, you know, and this is just that not in that it doesn't, it doesn't matter with art, which is, I love it so much. It shouldn't, so. It, I would say it shouldn't matter. It does matter. It is yeah. hard to put your stuff out there on the internet. Well, because, that's a sep that's a separate, that's a separate fear. Yes, yes for sure. And, uh, but, sure. but once you realize the sky's not going to fall down, if somebody doesn't like your stuff, and I don't know who it was that, I guess it was my husband, but I, I was not happy with the piece, but he was happy with the piece. And I said, yeah, but I meant for it to do this. I meant for it to come out like this. And he said, but nobody knows what you meant. Right. Nobody knows but right. you. Right. And so right. It, it can be kind of a happy mistake. And then, so I'm like, yeah, I meant for it to be like that, you know, but yeah. Oh yeah. I do that all the time. I'm like, if we're using a reference and I say like, if you're disappointed, it doesn't look exactly like the reference. Well, just remember no one sees the reference. Thank you. So they yeah. don't know. Yeah. Nobody knows. It's okay. And you know? we are our worst critics, aren't we? I know. I know. I, I said it's so funny because my husband would tell me, oh, that's so great. Oh, that's so great. But I never believe him because he's my husband. What's he going to say? You know? know, he's always going to be nice. Uh, <laughs> but then, you know, people who they don't know me, you know, and so you have to start. Yeah, it, it really helps when somebody that doesn't know you does nice things. But even still, I tell you what, I, I, I'm not as good of a, I, I should be a better housekeeper now that I'm not having to clean up after a teenager. But um, I actually do neglect that part a little bit because I'm really thrilled with this new freedom. Nice. And I, and then I have to tell myself, don't feel guilty because I'm a lot more cheerful to be around after art as opposed to doing laundry. <laughs> ah, yes, 100%, 100%. I could not agree with you more. And it's an amazing escape from doing the laundry too, which there's always that, at least in my world. I'm like, I really can't do the laundry and I have to finish this painting. <laughs> so it, it's, it's just the benefits never really end. <laughs> No, no, I don't. love that. How long have you, um, so how did you get started with acrylics? Like, how did you know that's where you wanted to start? Was it just easy and accessible or? I, did, I mean, yeah, I had bought them just the cheap, and I'm talking the cheap art, yeah. you know, like a deco art Americana like crap paint, paint. Um, mm -hmm. for the kids. I had them on hand. I used what I had on hand. Yeah. And it turned out to be you know, there's nothing wrong with those paints. Um, no, there's not. Crafts are great. People say, you know, they'll list their paintings and they'll say, oh, professional grade paint used. And I'm like, well, you know, that's, that's fine. Oh, but, I love some craft paint. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. And for yeah. me, they actually turned out to be better because they're thinner and I paint precise lines, you know, I'm kind right. of in the line kind of girl. Right. And so for me, they work better than the heavy body. However, I did buy some of the um, Lucas mm -hmm. acrylics, which are that, thicker. That's what I use. And yeah. So I've not really dove in to them yeah. quite yet. They're sitting there ready to be used. I've used them a little bit, but they they're they're for different things. You know, they're not yeah. going to be for my normal paintings. But I just used acrylic mostly because my mother was an oil painter, and I need to send you pictures of her oil paints. They're mm -hmm. in the front room. And uh, she oil painted when I was growing up briefly before, long story, father alcoholic left and mother raised us on her own. So painting mm -hmm. took a back seat mm -hmm. while she raised us. She worked her whole life, retired, and then took up oil painting again. Mm -hmm. But all I remember from those painting years was turpentine. And I yeah. thought, I don't want turpentine. So right. I, I really like the acrylic. It's soap and water cleanup. Right. And so, you know, I'm not like paint snob I'll just get what works and um uh, yeah um, that's you I tell my students that all the time like this is what I'm using but like honestly use what you have and you love like period I don't even care if it's a paint you know use marker if I'm using markers use color pencils like that's not what's important to me what's important is that we are having fun and we are learning something and you know a lot of this stuff too like it overlaps you know I'm sh this part is darker so 
whatever your supply you're using, do a darker color here, you know, and right. You know, one of those so. artists that one of those artists that joined me in a challenge, we did one that was a hundred day challenge, create a Ooh. new piece once a day, every day. Well, now I'm in a year long challenge. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We're on day 49 and uh, create and uh, recreate, start to finish a new piece every day. Anyway, he submitted these works of art using crayons. I'm oh. talking Crayola. Wow. Not even wax, you right. know, uh, wax, <gasps> wax things. And I said, oh my gosh, Robert, you're kidding me. So, you know, we, we look at these things that kids use as like inferior. No, they're not. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I know. I believe you. I think that's so cool. Yeah. I'm definitely, I'm a huge fan of use what you have and what you love, you know, period. Yeah. And the point yeah. is just, let's just go, you know, let's create, let's go, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. So I love, I love that so much. Um, so, so your um so i know from your etsy shop that and just from um seeing your pieces that you do work in acrylic and so my students were asking how did you get to the digital pictures from the um from the acrylics and also real quick though do you use anything else with your acrylic paintings like do you ever use like a paint pen to help you with fine lines or is everything brush in acrylic because oh my gosh most everything's so brush most everything is brushed with acrylic. Now I will add some detail um, with uh, permanent markers like Indian ink, the pit pins. Yes, I love those yeah, so much. I like yeah, them. Me too. And so I might add details with that. But okay. the digital, the digital work came about. I really lucked out. And in 2012, shortly after I opened my Etsy, a um, company in Illinois opened up a chain of they were going to open up a chain of uh, cafes, right? Mm -hmm. And they wanted me to produce art just for their cafes. Oh, they wanted cool. me to produce paintings. So I created these big 30 inch by 40 inch paintings and 20 inch by 60 inch paintings. And I packaged them up. I almost didn't get the 30 by 40 in the car and uh, sent them off, right? And uh, they said, we love them. Now we just need more for the 125 cafes were opening and I said oh well you know I didn't see that coming and I said yeah you know I'm one person right. and, and quite frankly those 30 by 40 they don't fit on my easel I have to bend over right and so I was like a little granny bent over for right. days after yeah. painting those. and I yeah. said <laughs> I told my husband yeah. I actually thought about doing it but then yes. I realized I would cripple myself and so yes. I said well okay, I, I can't do that. But you know, here's the thing. If you remember how I started by using the digital program oh, and yes. that's how I, that's how I had been creating the patterns for my paintings. I designed them on the computer first. And if you look at my Etsy shop, it shows you pictures. I show a digital version and then I show how I use that. That's my model. And I paint what I see. And I thought, Donna, do you got all these digital files. Right. And so I told them, I said, I think I can find someplace. There were places like Michael's had a, um, you could you could upload your photo and have a canvas print made. And I said, a canvas print will look like a canvas painting. Oh yeah. That is how, literally how I got into the digital. Oh, I just lucked to help because, but for them contacting me for the cafe, I don't think I ever would have looked at my digital files as digital right. art. So these are your, your, you're, like, you're creating these. Yes, I'm creating these. <gasps> and uh, it's all vector. It's vector based. And so I can create really large files. And, but I didn't know what I had sitting there. I know that sounds dumb, but. Oh, no, it's just, you're not. Yeah. You just never done it before. You weren't never thinking done of them in that way. So for sure. Yeah. That, no, that, that. Yeah, I just bought it to create yeah. church banners, you know, and then right. play around with it. And then I thought, well, I can design my paintings because I'm not good at I'm not good at drawing. Everybody thinks, you know, oh, you're an artist, you must be good at drawing, but we, we get together for family games and play that win, lose, or draw. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we want her on our team. You know, my cow looks like a dog. And, and so I can't draw. And so I they are separate. Them. They are separate skills. It's so Yeah, fun. and then yeah. I can try out different colors on the computer, yes. but that's how, that's how, and I thought, I got all these files. I had yeah. to work on them to get them perfect, you know, because when you're designing just, Oh yeah. Like, yeah. So I had to make them print ready, but 
it really frees up my time because, I, and plus, oh, yeah. there's nothing wrong with digital art. I no, can do things of course not. digitally that I can never do course with, with these you know well, and I love I love the bold graphic look of them I mean yeah. that's why I like it you know like that's why I purchased them it wasn't because I didn't love it you know so yeah. I think it's fantastic um it well, I think the only reason I was surprised was that your acrylic paintings look they all they almost look also look digital because they're so perfectly done and so they're I based, think yeah. I was they're like wow. on yeah so cool it's so cool and it's so smart too by the way i mean it's smart business wise it's smart creatively wise because you can just you know you can it's just a like i'm the i'm the worst at planting planning out anything i'm I, it's something i struggle with i kind of like do something to completion and then i'll be like oh it, i should have other things in here too you know and then it's like harder once you already have a main subject painted and done to then go in and fill the background. So if you can plan it out ahead of time, it's a, that's a much more efficient way of working. Yeah, so. people are surprised because they will they will ask me um, to do a painting because some people are big on paintings. They don't want digital, right. they want a painting. Sure, yeah. And that that's what I really love to do, right. most of all, is painting. Right. And I will have, sometimes they'll send me the design and I'll say, yeah, well, I can't paint that. And they're like, you can? I thought this was a painting and I have to go through the whole digital, you know, Got it. well, it's a digital thing. Right. And I said, no, that's the beauty of digital. I can do things that I can't uh, talent wise paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have to tell them, no, I can't paint. I can't paint that. That's so funny. That's so funny. I love that. This is so interesting. This is so much uh, more to, to, to your process than I ever imagined. So the, thank you so much for sharing. Welcome. Sharing. Welcome. I really appreciate it. Um, so is, so paint is the name of the program that you still use? To, is it the same? No, actually I use Corel. Corel. Oh, yeah, yeah. I totally heard of that. My boys are into... Um, into doing that. My oldest is going to college for game art. So he, because of them, I've sort of heard of more programs than I probably would normally know by myself, but um, that's, that's really, really, really interesting. And if I can learn it, anybody can learn it. Cause you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not techie. You know, my husband yeah. had to set up the zoom meeting. I know. And when he tried to tell, talk me, I was using a free program. There's a lot of free graphic design programs out there. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they're called, but you can search. Well, GIMP, g-i-m-p okay i've heard that one too yeah and um so then i used those for a while but he encouraged me go ahead and, and buy the more expensive okay. ones right and i said i'll never learn them i'll never learn them and so he would read the owner's manual because he likes doing that mm -hmm. and uh then he would explain and show me how to do it i mean that's how i learned because yeah. i don't think i ever would have learned because i kept saying i'll never learn that i'll never learn that it seems uh, like a heavy duty to try to take on something. I'm but I did learn it. So, yeah, you so did. If I, if I can do it, anybody well, can do it. That is so inspirational. Thank you. That's so neat. When you, so when you design a scene in Corral and then you're, that you're going to do a painting of, mm -hmm. do you like, can you, do you blow it up and transfer the outlines of that? Or do you free, or do you take like a ruler and map it out kind of like you eyeball? Yeah, most of my stuff is rectangles and circles. I have rectangles and circle templates and yeah, you just get the main characters. Right, right. And uh, the floor, I often don't even put a floor. <laughs> I know, I love it. I, that's like this one has no floor. Yeah, and he has, just... you, you know, that's one of my biggest sellers. That's a really early one. And uh, I, I didn't even put floors. I just wanted it. I'm a real minimal person. And, yes. uh Anyway, I just kept him real minimal. And then I thought maybe I should put floors, but then I just tape it off, you know, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Floor and all that stuff. But my paintings are very simple. Well, uh, and I think mine are too. And I think that's why I'm drawn to your style. First of all, I'm 70s, 70s girl and orange is like the color of my childhood. So I, I'm so drawn to your, to your colors. Like they just speak to me and I am very much the same way. Like most of my drawings and paintings, like don't have a background. Like I just, I'm so happy with the main subject. I don't even like oh, think yeah. to do a background. So I, when you say like, I don't need a floor, I'm like, of course you don't need a floor. Like it's, you know, it's like, I, I definitely, I, I just match your vibe. And I, I just, Thank I, you. I love it all so much. Um, I have another question. Um, 
oh, I know <clears throat> how, this is a question for my student. Um, she would love to know how you got your initial inspiration to draw mid-century. Why mid-century? Oh yeah, well, because when I was a kid, uh, this is Waffles, sorry. Oh, she, hi Waffles, Maggie. Um, I think around here somewhere. When I was a kid, <laughs> back in the 60s, um, in early 70s, but mostly the 60s, we we weren't we weren't well off because there's a mom, single mom and kids. Mm -hmm. And I used to lay on the floor with the Sears catalog and look at the modern furniture because I remember being woken up for the moon landing. So we were all about space and modern stuff in the late 60s. Yes. And all the furniture was chrome and modern and these fancy chairs like the egg chairs you know and the, the um, ball chair I love them mm -hmm. and I used to I used to you know say this is going to be in my apartment and stuff like that and so when I started painting and first I was designing the rooms using that program I used to design my church banners and I just put those pieces in and, you know, mine are not stylized. They're actually from the, from a photo mm -hmm. They're You know, I love like um, the opening of Bewitched, you know, and yes. it's all stylized. The tables are crooked and stuff yes. like that. I love yes. that. Yes. So mine are, I just stuck with the photos. I don't yes. know why, but so they're real. They're real. Yes. Everything you see is from that time. I get my pieces from looking at old photographs. And people will say, I had that exact same lamp. And they're not kidding. They really had that exact yeah. same lamp because I got it out of an old photograph from a catalog or someone's room. Um, yeah. I just loved that era. And, you know, it was, it's called mid-century modern, yeah. but it's modern. You know, yeah. it was modern back then. Sure. And uh, I just love it. I love it. They don't make it like that anymore. I know. I'm with you. I have, I have, um, I just, I love looking back at all the different decades. I actually am starting a thing called Drawing the Decades where we're going decade by decade. I published two books last year called uh, All About Drawing Art Deco and going through that style. And so that's why um, my next stop was mid-century, you know, starting to do 40s and then 50s and then 60s, which is how I got here. Cause I'm like, I cannot get enough of all these, every decade has these really, I love the furnishings and that is what I was drawing in teaching to draw in my books too. And I just, I just love it. I just love it so much. And, and the I, colors. And, and the, the colors. colors. When I was in the seventies, I, I took a home ec class and I walked in the room and there were four, four kitchens set up. Each kitchen, avocado green, harvest yep. you know yep. gold or whatever the orange and yep. then the brown yep. and they had the little mushroom canisters yep. and it was all quite oh my gosh I fell in love you know yeah yeah yep. and uh I think that was when I really wanted to be a wife because I wanted my own kitchen like that right but, right but even the colors from the 60s and the 70s mm. I just love I do too I you know? do too I do Some too people, I they say, avocado green yep but I'm like what that's I like avocado green and orange are my favorite I know orange makes me so happy my mom I actually still sleep with the baby blanket that my mom made because it's like the size of a twin um and it's an orange quilt and I sleep with it to this day and it's just that color will just makes me so happy and yeah. Um, so again, I think that's why my, it's the accent color of my, um, living room. I have bright orange phone in my living room. So I'm like, I can't wait to make my Donna wall. I'll, I'll show it to you when it's all framed and put up, but it just makes me so happy. So, well, I just want to let you know that I think your work is awesome. I, it's influencing just the spirits of a lot of people, making a lot of people feel so good inside. I want to thank you so much for allowing us to use your pieces for inspiration. I really was teaching people how to, to use it in new ways. So we're not copying directly and we're kind of taking a little piece here and a piece here. And then, and you should see some of the pieces that people are coming up with are, I'll, sh I'll share them with you. I'll send you well, pictures. I've seen, some. I've seen oh, some, I've had, I know one woman on Instagram, she tagged me or however good you know. I'm yeah. glad good good yeah oh and my then gosh I've, I've seen some feeds I joined your you know the retro Facebook 
thing. Good. So I've had some of those. Okay, good. Oh my I'm gosh. really enjoying the faces, I have to tell you, because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get good at faces myself. Good. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's just fun, you know? It's I, so fun. It is really, really, really fun. So, and if you, would you like to join my drawing club to learn how to draw faces better? I could, yeah. Would you like to draw? I'll give you a private invitation so yeah. that maybe is a way for me to say thank you. you. I will, you can come and join for free. And then um, in just as a way for me to say thank you so much, because I really do think, appreciate your time and just talking with us today. And I know that everyone's going to want to see what, no pressure, Donna, but everyone's going I want to see your faces, I think. And oh, maybe they'll right. have a cool mid-century uh, flair. You can you can add, add uh, well, your... Yeah. Well, you know, this is my homemade haircut ever since COVID. <laughs> so pardon, go easy on me. We are a very nice group or you're not allowed in. So, um, <laughs> and if you're not nice when you get here, well, we'll not hesitate to remove you as well. So not you, but anyone who is not nice. Um, well, it's great that you're teaching people to do art. You know, I, I just, I don't know. I can't wait till COVID is done. We have three little boys next door who are homeschooled oh, and I've already fun. told her I would love to teach them art, you know? <laughs> And, but we have to wait a little bit longer yet. Yeah. And I'd like to work with seniors so they could create things, you know, but yeah. there's something about creating art. You don't think, in fact, I had my yearly physical and my doc, my doctor is my age. Her name is Donna, coincidentally enough. And she was saying, what do you do with your time now? You know? And I said, yeah. well, you know, I do art and stuff like that. And uh, she goes, you do? And she said, I wish I were creative. And I looked at her and I said, you probably are. Uh, yes, I totally you agree. probably are. And I told her, I read something where your most creative time begins after 50. And I really think it's because you kind of lose your inhibitions. You're not mm -hmm. so worried what people think anymore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, and I told her, you need to just do it. Just, just do it. Yeah. A hundred percent. Again, like what, what's going to happen? I mean, just try it. Just try it, go out, yeah, you know, yeah. and you can, you can find stuff really cheap at um, the dollar store. Even they mm -hmm. have paints, they have canvases. You don't have to spend a lot. Like I said, I'm using paints and uh, they're like a dollar a bottle. Yep. And I do have more expensive paints to use, yeah. but I still go back to the O's, yeah. you know, and I don't get expensive brushes per se. Um, yeah. You don't need a lot of money to start. You can just use a no. pencil to draw. I was just going to say, and with drawing, obviously painting is hard, but with drawing, and I think that's why I love drawing. I love a lot of things. I do a lot of different things. But one of the reasons I love drawing is because you can make magic with just a pencil. Yeah. I mean... It's just a pencil. Like everyone has a pencil. You could have right, nothing, right. but every, even poor children in Africa have a pencil. Like you can, uh, you can do actually so much with so little. And I just think that that is like the definition of magic. Like what, how that is so cool to me. So it is, cool. it is so um, cool. And I, I like to draw too, but for some reason faces has intimidated me. And I think, and I thought, you know, you need to practice what you preach. Just do it. And yeah. Well, and just because, you know, people yeah, say, it is. why don't well, you I was the same way? I was the same way. I did commission paintings for 10 years before I ever tried drawing a face. Cause I was like, I, I can do anything, but I, I know I can't do that. So I'm not even going there. Like I'll, uh -huh. I'll paint anything for you, but I'm not doing that. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, but, um, and then, and then I tried it and I was like, oh, oh this is like anything else. Like this is one of those things it, to me, it's almost like swimming or learning like learning like if you think about being 50 years old and you've never ridden a bike and you look at someone riding it and you're like okay those tires are this thin like right right how is that happening you know and you try to get on it and you're like how does this is just seems beyond difficult and then you, somebody teaches you and you fall a little bit and it's wonky and uncomfortable but then all of a sudden before you know it you're kind of up and going I feel like drawing is exactly the same where it seems impossible especially faces it just seems like an insurmountable task that you could never achieve but once you kind of just shut your brain off and then you just follow someone's lead and you learn right. the little steps you're wobbly and it's weird and whatever and then all of a sudden you're like oh, you get it it's the same exact thing and it's my favorite is watching people who are afraid get over their fear to start and they are 
messaging me like, Karen, look what I just did. Yeah. These are grown adults, you know? And I'm like, I knew you could do it. It's just, it's like the best feeling in the, the, the world. I actually teach faces first in my drawing club because it's the hardest thing. And uh, frankly, if you, and I teach it really slowly, you know, we start super slow and gradually kind of do shapes and then whimsical faces. And then we turn the whimsical faces and then we do really, you know, it's like baby steps. But then I'm like, hey, now guys, you now you can really draw anything. Like we started at the top and now you can go and draw some figures and buildings. And so that's why I start with faces instead of finish with faces to, wow. well, you, you know. know there was a debate going on between artists. How are there rules? Like there's rules and people say, no, there's no rules. I say, of course there's rules. Okay. It's like, there's rules in cooking. And oh, right. Can't, right. Yeah. And so I used to tell my kids when I would teach them art, I said, it's a lot like cooking. You know, you can't just throw things in a bowl, stir it up and you know, Make there's some paint. rules, right? Yeah, know? there are. <laughs> and uh, it's the same with art. And so there are rules. I'm sorry, but there are. But once you learn the basics, and I told them like your, um, the paint and your media, you know, you've got your elements. Mm -hmm. That's the, what you, that's like your ingredients, right? Sure. Yeah. And then your principles and things are how you combine them. Just mm -hmm. like cooking you've got your ingredients right. and yeah. you you know you know what works together or, oh. you know how to put them together you know yeah. how to do that I said it's really a lot like cooking there it are is. rules but right. once you know the rules mm -hmm. then you know how you can kind of break them a little yeah um but you got to know those rules and so I know faces will be the same once I know the rules yes and it's so funny because I've done faces with my kids but I just did the down line and the across line, I didn't know that the mouth was midway between the chin. And I'm like, right. oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so easy. Once you know that, you're like, oh, I can do that, right? Like 60 years to learn it, but I learned it. And uh, and that's what I mean. Once you once you take the mystery out of it and people exactly. are like, oh my gosh, that's all there is, you know? Yeah. And uh, I've done a few, I've done a few uh painting videos and because people ask me how I get the clean lines, they assume I'm taping off everything. And I'm like, oh, are you kidding? That would take me hours. It's much easier just to get my brush. And one woman said, I was doing, uh, you know, I have some 70s where they got the wavy lines and I was showing how to uh, paint that. And I use a, a Filbert, kind of a big, like 12, number 12 or whatnot. And she goes, I would never have thought to use a big brush like that. I would have gone in with a liner and I thought, oh man, I would totally mess it up with a liner. It's much easier. You have more control actually with that bigger round right. brush. And uh, so just things like that, once you, once you take the mystery out of it yes. and, and show people the way they can branch off however yeah. they want, once they've got the basics down, just like cooking, you know, I, I'm not real brave with cooking. I still get my recipes out. Sure. Well, no, I, I could not agree with you more. And that's why, and continuing with the food analogy, and I actually, that's funny because I have a book called Mixed Media Hamburger System. I actually, uh, it's like my system where it says yeah. seven layers, like a hamburger, and you have to put them in this order right. because you'll get it. It's awesome if you do. And if you don't then mm, it's yeah, kind yeah. of a mess but or you could have a masterpiece which is an awesome right. layered burger but um um oh I was gonna say something before I had to interrupt myself for that what were you just talking about um oh the oh um I feel like when people are stressing and stressing about learning too I feel like uh watching a video or using a book is like using a recipe also where yeah. I yeah. always say like well I'm sitting here killing myself making a million videos like you don't have to come up with these rules by yourself either like just press play on the video and follow me like I right. will take you through it right or open to page 67 let's put those space guidelines in it's very learnable and there's a lot of resources I mean that's literally what I do for a living is try to make it as easy as possible. So you can right. be awesome as fast as possible. So then you can go off and do your own thing. But yeah, let's get those, let's get those 
essentials down and then you can go nuts and be creative and hog wild or whatever. But yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I, I agree with you. There are no rules, but there are some really good ideas that work and there's some really bad mixes as well, which yeah. will lead to disaster, which then that's not fun either, you know, so. No, it's not. It, <laughs> that's it's really it quite frankly, stressful. Yes. I, I learn from my mistakes. Yes. Uh, I yes. create a lot of mistakes and uh, in that, 100 day challenge one day I could not get the piece I was working on to come out good and the time was running out for me to submit my piece and I had just I had some gelatos they're the cheaper brand of yeah. um, not gelatos they're gel sticks they're mm -hmm. cheaper yeah cheaper version of the gelatos anyway I was feeling very frustrated and I got a can <laughs> I got a canvas board out and I scribbled them and I had my gloves on and got them wet and I smeared it around and then I you, I dried it with a hairdryer, used my um, acrylic to outline some stuff mm -hmm. and people were like raving over it. And I thought that, you know, that that was ba based because I screwed up. Yeah, that three, never would have happened. Three, three times before. And, <laughs> but sometimes you learn things best from screwing up. And so don't be afraid to screw up. You 100%, know, it, always, always. Yeah. I know I have people that email every day, like, can I do this? can I do this? And I was like, just try it. Like, I'm always yeah. like, yeah, but also like, just go. Like everything I learned, I learned from just trying it or having a disastrous mistake or happy accident. People know I love, I actually have Bob Ross slippers, like literally sitting oh, right here with the whole happy right. accent. Cause I'm always like, he is right. Like he's right. Just, just go for it. Just make a mess. You'll have all sorts of accidents. Some will be good. Some will be bad, but you'll learn from the bad mistakes right and right. then so there's no downside to just trying no things downside. and there's no downside to your mistakes either so I think nobody's that's... grading you nobody's grading you <laughs> exactly again we're so, it doesn't used matter. To, we're so used to needing people's approval really yes. and um you know i was asked by a magazine how do you keep your art how do you keep it popular for the current age whatever i forget how they phrased it but they they sent me i was in a magazine Atomic Ranch, and they sent me a questionnaire to yeah. fill out for it. How do you keep it uh, popular or whatever? And I said, well, I make my scenes happy. And happiness never goes out of style, I, you know. And to yeah. me, that is, I have other hobbies. Right. I have other hobbies, you know. And, um, but none of them make me feel like a child yes. that, that my art does. And right. that's why I love to teach children, because they haven't gotten shy yet you know and they create some of the most beautiful things and I'm yeah. like almost envious because it's like gosh you know <laughs> he's eight years old I know I started off by teaching kids as well and what I love about kids is not only do they make beautiful things because they're not afraid but they also love everything they make so they yeah. could make a disaster which I'm like oh and then they look it up and they're like I am amazing and I'd be like yes <laughs> yes you are <laughs> and I'm like, oh, if we could just bottle that into our adulthood, like that right there is like gold, right? And so when I started teaching adults, I'm like, oh, these adults are, they have the worst attitudes, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's just such a shame. So it I have to shame. say, I am very uh, mean with my students, uh, not allowing them to be negative because I'm like, yeah. guys. Like, this is just for fun. Like, for real, this is just for fun. Like, that is at the end of the day, and your art will be better, and you will get better faster if you're just having fun. Like, like swear, like swear, I swear, you know, like, everything is better if you just relax and you just have fun, because then you end up doing it more. And then you end up getting better because you're, you're doing it more and that everybody gets better when they do things more, no matter what it is. And so it's a compounding, you know, positive effect. Well, if you can get people to realize, sorry for the dogs. Oh, you're, you're fine. I have people purpose. to realize who are you doing it for? I mean, you. you know, yeah, now I do my art when I'm commissioned, I'm doing it for that person. And I'll actually stress out a little bit over that because I really want to do well right. for that person. Right. Uh, I get a lot of requests for painting dogs and animals that have passed, you know, yeah. and their memorials and, oh gosh, talk about tugs at my heart. Yeah. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, right. And, um, but for the most part, I'm doing this 
for me. You, right. you need to get it out of your head that somehow you're doing it for others, for their approval. Um, mm -hmm. There is, I get more satisfaction out of the moment I pour the paint onto the palette. I mean, to see the color, just, just, I don't know, it's kind yeah. of weird, but you just have to mm -hmm. get to that point where you're, you're loving the process, you're loving the, yeah. the, the visual of it, you know, right. the, for you, like be selfish. About I know, it. Yeah, notice, totally. notice the paint when it hits yes. the canvas, notice the color, notice how things go together. And I don't know if you just get into the um, art and, and make it be about you mm -hmm. and the art, you mm -hmm. and the colors, you and the shapes. Art is really a lot of shapes, you know, after all, you put the face together, it's ovals, like you point out, yeah. and um, stuff like that. But I just, I think people are so hung up on needing, needing validation for, for how they spend their time. Um, no, there's some time you just need to let loose and get, yeah. and get back into the child that you used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't think I've ever grown up all the way. Maybe, maybe that's what helps, but no, I, I'm I, I, sad, I, sad I, for people that can't just let loose and, and be, you know, silly and yeah. fun and not worry about it. And just because it's really lovely to be by yourself with your paints, with your pencils, with your paper and think, oh my gosh, you know, like remember when you were a kid and you got a brand new box of crayons, you could have a whole, you know, carton of broken crayons, but then someone gives you that new box. You couldn't mm -hmm. wait to use them, right? You weren't thinking about anybody, but those crayons. And that's what people need to get to because that's when you really get happy. <laughs> I could not agree with you more. I could not agree with you more. People always, they always, they're like, why don't you sell your work? And I was like, cause it's not for them. I'm doing it for me. And they think I'm like crazy. They're like, you can all that work. You can sell them. Like, yeah, I, but I literally do it for me. Like, yeah, I love yeah. it so much. I don't even care about that part. Like, that's not why I'm making it. Like someday, yeah, I'll have a big sale and clear out everything, but I truly am just making it cause I enjoy it so much. And I want to spread the joy of that by teaching others. And like, I've had my film, like, that's all I need. I don't need the sales for anything. You know what I mean? So I don't even bother with it. And they're like, what? You're so weird. Like, what? you know, you could be making all this money. And like, I don't care about that. I just want to have fun every day and hang out with my inner eight-year-old because it's the best feeling in the whole world. And I would be much more interested in having you experience your eight-year-old that's my payment like that's like knowing you're doing that makes me so happy then I feel great and you know I I thought I would have such joy buying that art printer and printing my own prints right <laughs> uh, well it is nice on one hand but you yeah. know what it's taken up so much time mm -hmm. that uh, I told my husband you know talk about the money part and I don't mean this to sound braggy I said the only thing I'm making anymore is money and I'm not in making art because it's taking me so long now yeah. to fulfill those Etsy orders, right? I, I know, yeah. And and so I did. I don't know why I didn't think about that. And it is a wonderful sensation to see it coming out of the printer. You know, mm -hmm. the colors are so vibrant, and it's like, oh my gosh! And and uh, but it's just it has. It's like that's not as fulfilling. And you, and all I'm doing is working and yeah. selling. And right. And so. I'm going to back things up to where it used to be, where I mostly painted mm -hmm. and because uh, that's where the joy comes from. But yeah. now I've kind of got myself in a bind because, you know, get this all expensive printer and now you feel like you got to use it. And right. my husband's my husband's so sweet. I bless him. He says, you've already paid for it. Truth. You've already made enough to pay for it. Right. Don't worry if you don't use it ever again. You, it's, it's, it's an experience you wanted to try, but now you see there's a drawback. You only have so much time in a day. Right. And uh, I don't want to be printing and packaging and mailing and going to the post office. It I, is, want to I totally agree. I know. Yeah. I know. I hear you. So, you know, there are services though that can print and ship for you. They can, but you know, I, I just thought it would be a great experience yeah. because then I'd have control over the quality. Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, I'll sit there literally, Karen, with a magnifying glass and I'll say, see that dot? I can't sell it. And so it goes in a drawer and I have this, you know, pile yeah. now that I think I'm going to offer to my Facebook followers at a very, 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 very high discount. But um, it doesn't go out the door 
unless it's perfect, you know, and right. I thought that would be very fulfilling, but it's not as much as painting. Right. And so, yeah, it's, it's, if you can get people and people feel good, they, a lot of people don't think they can do anything well. And if you can just, and if they have any inkling to do art, like my doctor, she said, I wish I could do that. I wish I were creating. I said, you probably are, and you probably can. Right. You got to get over thinking, oh, yeah, you just have to want to and then go for it. You know, well, people are shocked. I didn't have any schooling. See, and that's what I think a lot of people hold themselves back. It's like the, you know, you got to be a, sh go to chef school or something. Right. To cook. No, you right. don't. Right. You have to get in there and do it and yeah. get better yeah. at cooking. You got to do art. And they're, they're shocked. I didn't have any formal training and uh, I, I wish I would have, but right. maybe, right. maybe not. Maybe I would have been, I don't know. I like learning by doing quite I frankly. Do too. I don't know. I'm self-taught too as well. I didn't, yeah. I went to undergrad and graduate school and I didn't learn to draw or paint either place. I learned drafting at a drafting table with a, with a parallel ruler. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all the stuff I do now, I just did by doing, I just did it a lot. And that's what people tell me. They say that that inspires them too. The yeah. fact that if she can do it and she didn't go to college and I'm sure not going now, you know, yeah. you don't <laughs> need to. Yeah. yeah. You're never, never too old to learn new things. No, I I'm 60. I just learned how to watercolor. Nice. I was third. I was 38 when I learned to play the violin. I took that up, you know, love it. Just, just, just learn. Yes. It's, it's really fun to learn new things and I, but there's something special about art I just don't know what it is yep. and uh, so yeah it's great that you're teaching people well it's, you're it's, teaching people too and inspiring people by letting allowing us in to hear your story and you know just this interview alone is going to inspire a whole huge group of people so thank you so well, well thank um, you yeah, this was a really, this was a really special opportunity for me. Thank you so much for allowing me to come and ask you some questions and just allowing us to have access to your eyeballs on your art. And we hopefully we respected um, all of the hard work you've done and uh -huh. you've done and allowed it to inspire us. And um, I hope you get lots and lots of Etsy sales. Um, if you awesome. want to have a sale on your imperfects, I do that sometimes with my books. Like I'll sign it to the wrong person accidentally. And then I'm like, oh no, I can't sell that one. But sometimes I'll have like a, you know, I'll just mark them like, oops, 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 books, you know, like they're made out to other people, but I'll make them like 50% off. And so those actually end up flying off the shelves. You're like, we don't care. We just want the book, right? So, um, well, this will so. be a, this will be a first because I'm, I'm really camera shy. And, but I'm trying to get out of that, you know, and people, I've actually seen people where they write, I've never even seen a picture of her. <laughs> and it's like, well, okay, long story short, I'm a twin, I'm not identical. But back in school, I overheard someone in junior high, you know, junior high uh, when everybody, yes, I have a 13 year said, old. So well, I how do you tell them apart? And they said, well, Debbie, my sister, Debbie's mm -hmm. the pretty one, and Don is the funny one. And that has stuck with me. So of course, you know, now it's not like they said she's the funny looking one, but <laughs> right. right. That's funny what one. I heard. And uh, so I've kind of shied away from doing, in fact, the few videos, this is my dog. Oh, she's, she just went blind in December. So she's wearing a halo. Oh my goodness. I have never oh. seen that before. Does oh, that it's wonderful, but pardon, pardon her. Apparently she needs me. Oh, but, yeah, uh, fine. Anyway, so for her. that reason, none of my videos show me, they just show my hand. So yeah. they, they're probably thinking I'm like some hermit. No, <laughs> you know, I, I just don't, I don't know. I, I have to get over those inhibitions. So you're not going to see a bunch of selfies of me over that because you know I'm the funny twin but uh anyway so that's why it's not that and I feel bad because I don't want people thinking I'm unsociable you know right you're it's very like, sociable I can well, attest some, no. some people just don't you know but I'm kind of glad that that happened to be quite honest because I didn't rely on my looks for all <laughs> your whole and, life oh my and, gosh uh, yeah no, I know. well this. my sister was always the skinny one so if that makes you feel any better <laughs> I'd rather be the funny one any day but yeah labels <laughs> labels stay with you forever you yes, know they do I yeah. know I know uh, oh my anyway, gosh I, I trust I'm friendly I'm outgoing yeah you, you just are. want them to see pictures of me or no. videos but I, I mean, I'm going to try this year to get over that. And I might even film my own video showing me, but anyway, you can do it. Well, I was on YouTube for two full years before I ever showed my face. 
So if that makes you feel. Oh, better, thank so. you. I well, totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but that's nice. Well, it's also refreshing because the whole rest of the world is like, look at me, look at me, look at me. You, you know, yeah. you can stand out because you're. You're like, no, let's look at what's important, which is. Well, it's like I stopped dyeing my hair a couple of years ago, you know, because I got tired of it. And it's like, oh, they're going to be so disappointed to find out she's this granny. Oh, granny no, person. stop it. Stop. And, uh, but I don't know what people expect, but I have been worried that people are thinking I'm unsociable. And it's like, no, it's no. not. Just kind of camera shy. So Yeah, I think that's totally normal and absolutely fine. I think there's a lot of people that are camera shy. You're yeah. not alone. So good. But, but you've been, nice. you are very, like, you've been so sociable and you've been vulnerable and, you know, sharing your stories and it's going to impact a lot of people. Um, so I can't wait to share your story with them and hopefully you'll have a whole new group of fans. Thank you. I'm enjoying your videos. I, I especially love when you review products. That's, that's oh, very helpful. Oh, okay. Me. Good. So. I did a bunch uh, last year. I'm on to reviewing books now, art books, and then I do projects from the books, which is actually so much fun. So I'm learning and everyone can see my mix-ups and screw-ups and watch me following directions just like everybody else, right? Because I'm like you. I love to learn new things. So I I'm, I, I'm never going to stop. So hopefully people seem to be enjoying that as well. So, Well, it's funny because, you know, we learn. Um, I posted your books on my Instagram page oh, and I you. said yes artists learn from each other <laughs> yes yes exactly I'm not ashamed to say yeah, I don't know I know yeah. I do all the time I saw that to my students I'm like I will never be that artist who pretends to know more than you and in fact um I love a good challenge and I love it better when I'm not an expert at it I love yeah. the feeling of going into the unknown and having a discovery because it's new like that's right it's like it's a little drug of its own, which is always so exciting. And I think that's also why art is great because there's so many different mediums that you can try and they all have their little personalities. And so it's like a little rabbit hole that just never goes, old, that never gets old. It's always exciting. Um, and so I, I definitely try to preserve that sense. And I'm not shy about asking questions. Uh, I've gotten to know a lot of other artists and I will contact them and say, what do you, how do, what do you yeah. do that? You know? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And they'll, I'm sure they love to tell it too, because they, you know, everybody likes to talk about their work and what they're doing. And so, well, if you have any of the questions for, for me, as you're, you know, in, in your own art adventure, please reach out. I'm happy to answer them for you as well. And oh, it's such a pleasure to talk with you today. Oh, thank same you so here. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. Yeah, it was so awesome. And again, thank you. And I'll share a picture. Um, I'm going to share you some of the photos for my, well, if you're in the Facebook group, first of all, yay. Um, it just, so cool so cool the work that is coming out of there so but you've been a massive massive inspiration so just thank well, you from you. all of us to you i really thank do appreciate you. it thank you. it's thank been you. wonderful well i'm gonna go i have my child come, kid coming home from school and i'm gonna actually try to get a little project in this afternoon i'm doing a painting on a palette like a paint palette okay. which um i've never collaged on a palette today so i'm having quite a good time so I'm gonna go see if I can finish that up before dinner time tonight all right thank you Karen <laughs> thank enjoy you so it was my pleasure oh it was such a pleasure to talk to you thank you so much thank you okay. anytime anytime you want to barter you know you can oh I okay if you're on it's a deal <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you Donna okay. all right thank you bye-bye